I would say that the UBI would work in a way where, like, let's say your mom gets UBI, right? But then mm -hmm. she has kids. The UBI will have some sort of, like, clause, like, for every kid you have, you get 300 extra, you know, or some mm -hmm. shit like that. Because I don't think... I mean, first, who gets the UBI? Anyone over 18? I don't know. That, that's not my wheelhouse. But I would say that... No, I'm saying, know, like, it's, it's not... I mean, regardless of the wheelhouse... Like where where would we we have to put a because like, it couldn't be you couldn't make it so that everyone alive has it because then right you have you're to just gonna have people it, having kids right? in the hood like for get that one k a you can't month. get unemployment just by being eighteen you have to apply for it there's research between what you've done yeah but and the how UBI you've thing is supposed to, to be like you just give it to everyone yeah the yeah, universal then, basic income gets rid of gets rid of all administration so like instead get, of us paying rid of, for explain. Yeah, so instead of us getting rid of, I'm sorry, instead of us paying like these people to 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 vet the research and vet this and and then also get lost in administrative costs and I'm sure you know there's a little bit of fraud going on and things like that. You you actually minimize that, right? So like, Kiko actually had the numbers and we pay, I don't know, like thirty or forty percent of it. What was it, Kiko? That goes that's just lost in translation. Yeah. Well, well, what, what uh. So we collect, from from what I understand, we collect about, fuck, I don't remember the, the numbers, but it was something like the amount of taxes that we collect is, um, is, is more than what it would take to, to have UBI installed. Obviously taking, we're getting rid of everything else, uh, of all health programs. And then once you have that in place, uh you are actually duplicating the, the effective amount of what you're using because all welfare programs have like a fifth, almost close to 50% loss in bureaucracy, in policing, in, uh, in administrative. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. Is Even, that, are you going to play this on bass? Or? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> plucking around. I, I Do you hear it? No, but I'm just like... I, oh, yeah, I'm just, I've been waiting for sitting. you like to, like to be like, hey, guys, I want to show you something personal. Just, like in Seinfeld, every time no, we make no. a, a punchline or something, you just go like... Pow, pow, pow. No, just no, wanted I, to make I'm sure, just... like, are you engaged or are you having your, your bass class at the same time and not giving a fuck about it? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm engaged. I just wanted to, like, get my, my hand, my, uh, my finger work here done. For all the yeah, listeners, so. Steven is actually starting to slap at the bass. And he's actually taking uh, bass classes. If you could, yeah, yeah. You know. A uh, really cool guy, um, Demi, and he's got his own podcast, too. It's called Music Mentor. So you should... Uh, Yep, I'm just giving him a shameless plug right here. Here you go. <laughs> for those who are it's listening. Cool, man. It's cool, man. At this stage, you know, we're not charging for those. So, hey, man, good thing, you know. But yeah, he's he's learning to slap at a bass. And I'm super glad because me, I'm, as a musician, I was like, yo. So I'm super glad because if he's slapping a bass and if he gets good at it, then maybe he can slap at my bass. Yeah, and that was awesome. By, by, by that, I mean, like, you know, my the instruments that I would have in my studio because I could be interpreted like he could be slapping my personal bass has like attached to me, but that wouldn't be a bass, so I don't know. <laughs> but you know, some people out there could look at it a different way, which is cool because I'm, I have nothing against the gays, but I'm not myself. At least I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, was long. <laughs> over explained. <laughs> um. That was nice. That was nice. I really yeah. like that when I when I was like starting to get into the the squad cast the thing you guys what? yeah kiko was like telling you something about a scale or something and i'm like oh shit nice i actually thought that kiko was teaching you how to oh, slap yeah. that bass no he's uh yeah so i just i you know i've got a couple of musical people in my life and it's cool because like uh, it's it ranges right like in our last podcast <clears throat> we were talking about cameras and stuff you know and we could talk as easily about cameras as about you know uh, economic policies as you know music that's what we love the podcast really it's just typical topics typical guys or gals and you know what i mean just uh necessary typical conversation stuff. you know exactly yeah. no but so, yeah it is true necessary conversations i think is the is the thing because we always we always struggle so hard to find an identity to the podcast but it's like <clears throat> the identity is that we're typical people looking at the the vast world that we're living in and the vast 
amount of information that you have to consume and then try to make sense out of it. So, you know, talking about this UBI stuff makes me really think like it just in general, it's so hard to like compromise and find like a meeting point in things, you know? Right, right. Like obviously, you know, this podcast is, is really just a fuck around, but we try to sometimes make sense. And, and, and the thing is, I want people to be better. And I don't know if people think that because me and Steven normally lie a little bit to the right of the center uh, that, you know, we're some kind of way because there are some people nowadays that don't even have that in them to fucking discuss with somebody that they don't agree with 100%. But it's like <clears throat> being in that situation is just you want to be open to talk to everybody and debate things that are important, you know, because otherwise... What's the answer? Like we all kill each other? No, I think we gotta talk about this shit. And I mean, and and you've heard many podcasts here where we have people that don't agree with us, and and that's right. that's super cool, you know. Yeah. That's why I enjoy so much listening to this podcast, and why I was so excited to be able to be here. Because, like I told you guys, I've been in like three hour rides when I'm just like, oh, what the fuck are they talking about? And in other episodes, I'm like, yeah, totally, man. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice, definitely. Yeah. Well, excited. now that you're here, because because like you know, people think like. Normally, if you're in a position like this, you, you you don't want anything negative to come about. But, like, we want everybody to be able to have their opinion. And now that we're small, we're able to sort of address it in a more direct way. But, um, I mean, not to get out of the UBI situation, where we, which we can talk, continue to speak. But was there any other topics that you were hearing us, maybe on our way to some little town in Spain? And then me and Steven said some shit that you're like, man, if I had this guy next to me, I would just straight up slap him in the face, like. <laughs> flick his dick like yo what the fuck what? i remember episode i'm not sure if it's 32 with daniela about gender equality mm. right so well first of all with the ubi i think being in a country like colombia like closing that that subject um where i had family in government that were actually uh controlling the way that income was spread out through the less fortunate per se, um, I got to see how much corruption there was inside of that. So for a system like UBI to take out the middleman that's trying to keep that corruption away, whew, I think that would just, I mean, what keeps me from having people that die making fake social security numbers to collect their UBI? Who's going to make sure that that doesn't happen? No, that's why the there is a there is a valid like reason as to probably why this hasn't been implemented it just seems a little bit too yeah but no but but take a look at it like it's already but look look at it this way the people that you're talking about in colombia that steal all this money from government right the reason why they're able to steal it from government is because the money that comes in from the taxpayers they're supposed to analyze that budget and decide what needs to be used to do what things so then they grab this pot and they're like we're gonna keep 90 percent I mean, it changes depending on how corrupt your country is. But for example, in Venezuela, you take 90% straight to the dome, you know, and then with the other 10%, you pay off some people to shut the fuck up. And then with 1%, you do a little bit of whatever infrastructure you were going to make to show the people, oh, look, or, or you. So at the end of the day, when, when, you, when you make it less transparent, right, it's harder for you to follow the corruption. But when you say, look, every money that comes here in is going to be split into $1,000 checks every month to other people. It's a lot easier to keep track of that. Yes, you are going to have every system is going to have like little fucking hackers, right? Creating social accounts so they can get the thing sent to them, of course. But but compare that to the amount of money that gets stolen by the fact that there's people controlling those funds directly when they arrive and decide where, how they're going to be used. You know what I mean? Like right. it's, there's just a lot easier to fucking steal it all when you control the system within rather than you trying to hack the system and trying to get like one little profile there. But I mean, I totally get you. But do you see like, I just think it's like not as vast as, as it is already with the system we have in place in our countries. Right, right. For me, the problem is the people. And that brings me into the other subject, which is what jobs do we replace with AIs or programming, which I love because I remember once my brother, who was a programmer um, for Out of Desk, he quoted, uh, programmer is always working on how to get rid of his job and still have a job. 
because programmers are always making bots and automate, automate, uh, automatizing the way they work so that other people could do it or that people don't have to do it anymore. So this is a perfect example or, of where we have to get rid of the people that are making that shit unviable, un, un, unproductive by corruption and have an AI analyze it so that if you're making fake IDs to be able to collect that UBI, you you actually notice that this person actually died three years ago because there's a, a decla declaration of a disease declaration yeah, and you no longer have to keep in, in, in on top of that. Definitely. I do believe that there's a 50-50 um, a 50 50 um, blame in between the people that are taking advantage of the system from with the administration and from the other side. That's why I do believe in UBI, but I do believe that it has to happen further on when we're able to get rid of the shitty people that are actually doing that.